Hello, Maya Matukum here. Uh, I'm going to, this is a uh, trial number two. The first time I tried it, the file got corrupted. So I am guessing that somebody does not want me to do this. So this is try number two. And if the file is corrupted again, I will keep trying. So Satan, stop it. I am going to read from Philippians. Um, I decided that I'm going to do uh, a series and just read a chapter of Philippians for each one. And today I'm just going to do chapter one. But first I'm going to read the um, paragraph that is in my Bible that is talking about what the book of Philippians is about. It's an epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Philippians. Paul writes a thank you note to the believers at Philippi for their help in his hour of need, because he was in prison. And he uses the occasion to send along some instruction on Christian unity. His central thought is simple. Only in Christ are real unity and joy possible. With Christ as your model of humility and service, you can enjoy a oneness of purpose, attitude, goal, and labor, a truth which Paul illustrates from his own life. And when the Philippians Philippians desperately need to hear. Within their own ranks, fellow workers in the Philippian church are at odds, hindering the work in proclaiming new life in Christ. Because of this, Paul exhorts the church to stand fast, be of the same mind, rejoice in the Lord always, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So let us begin with chapter one. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you, all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what shall I choose? I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, 
having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Amen, I say. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. And that is the first chapter. I will next time read the second chapter. And I may pick a different world in VR chat to sit and read in. This one partic in particular is um, the world I created. It's just basic woods with birds chirping, or you can listen to a song by Terry Taylor. Um, I do have a video of that up on my YouTube of my world, and that one is not monetized because of I've caught Terry Taylor's song. Out of the Wildwood is one of my favorite songs. But uh, until next time, I'll read Philippians chapter 2. Thank you for listening.